I grew up in Toronto, Canada. Growing up, I never really got to watch college basketball that much. It wasn't really on TV. It was kind of like a dream that seems pretty far. I feel like that's changing. Toronto right now is as fast a growing basketball city as you'll see. Obviously, what they did with Kawhi Leonard last year, um, the amount of unbelievable basketball talent that's come out of there. Uh, it's no longer a hockey country. Basketball's taken over. My brother, Dwayne, noticed. He went to the University of South Carolina. He's in the G League. He plays with the Raptors 905. Dwayne was my first role model. So once I seen him playing basketball, I followed his footsteps. His biggest accomplishment today, I would say, is probably going to the Final Four his senior year. And notice, drops one from behind the arc. This program, consider it rebuilt. Me being five years older, he always had to be the little brother. We'd be in the basement together watching the Raptors games. We used to play on the Fisher Price net and try and reenact what the Raptors just did. Like, I just knew that I wanted to be in that position one day. The path between the American and Canadian when it comes to basketball is kind of different because it was harder to get gym time, get access to working on your game as much as you wanted to. I needed to go somewhere else if I wanted to get better opportunities. I was desperately begging my mother to let me go to prep school. My parents definitely at first were not up to the idea of, you know, shipping their kid off to the United States to you know, go to school and play basketball and not being able to see them. I went to high school downtown Toronto and there I played in the New England Prep League my postgrad year. And the guinea pig, or the test dummy, if you will, and you saw the benefits from it. When it came to my brother, we knew what to do. Your job as an older brother is to kind of take the bullets and then help whoever is up and behind you um, make sure that they don't have to take that same path. And that's what you found. He went to prep school his second year of high school. Coming out of high school, I committed to the University of Pittsburgh. Spent my freshman year there. It was definitely a tough season. Me and my family felt that it was best for me to move on and, and transfer. And then I ended up here at Minnesota. We felt like with Marcus, he could maybe lead to other guys because when we do recruit, Toronto and Canada, they know who Marcus Carr is. If those guys have great experiences, it can open up a door for somebody else. I'm just proud to be a big brother. It's kind of like to see someone who could take what you did, elevate it, and bring it to the next level. There's no better feeling. The feeling coming in that after transferring, I would be able to play with the guys right away and play on that team. And once that didn't happen, it was pretty devastating. Just putting things in perspective and, and, and realizing that my time will come and just had to be patient and work. It's hard with red shirts, but I remember one time we were playing Purdue we put Marcus on the scout team and we said, okay, you're going to be Carson Edwards. And Carson, he takes a lot of tough shots, makes a lot of tough shots. And Marcus kept making them. And I'm like, all right, we're just going to tell you you can be Carson Edwards all the time. Now you get off your feet, Marcus. The scout team was really fun last year. I took it very seriously. Watched a lot of film, probably more film than most guys sitting out do. Took it as a challenge, really, to imitate those guys as best I can, what their tendencies were and what their go-to moves were. Whether it's Cassius Winston, obviously, is terrific in ball screens at Michigan State. Xavier Simpson at Michigan. And he just kept giving our guys fits. He was really tough, always. Tough defense, tough offense. Some ridiculous finishes. <laughs> One practice, we were doing scout for Michigan. And Xavier Simpson, he does this little outside, behind the head, like, hook shot. I remember Marcus, I don't know how many times you hit that. Probably like two or three. Nah, I don't, four or five. <laughs> four or five. Just trying to be humble for the camera. <laughs> that guy like four or five times. Talking with Coach P in the offseason, he told me that he'd really be looking for me to lead this team this year. So on the summer leading up to this season, the process came to voting captains. Everybody writes two names down and then submits them to Coach. I was blessed enough to be a captain. If stuff's getting out of line in practice, he's the first one to be like, come on, it's time, time to tighten up. And then he just has the voice. You know, everybody listens to him when he's talking, so. Uh, and then the way he hoops, I mean, it speaks for itself. What a finish by Marcus Carr. Carr, why not? He just comes with this persona. 
that he's here to lead, whether he knows it or not. And we needed that, so we all just kind of follow that and we follow him. It's an honor to be on the court with them. And to know that they trust me to lead them is, is a huge responsibility, but I love it.